and welcome back. For the purposes of the video, I'm Toy Scourge. Welcome and happy 4th of July. Just gonna say this first off the bat, wearing the State Pride t-shirt, you gotta. Well, I mean, you don't got to, but you know, it's kind of 4th of July, celebrating and uh, having a little bit of pride in where you came from is kind of like the whole thing. I thought, whereas Captain America is all stars and stripes and like very, very obviously a 4th of July go-to, why not try something a little bit different? Not meta per se, but let's just start with Iron Man, shall we? Because, and bear with me here, what I really mean is he kind of embodies the American dream of anyone can make it. So, and well, industry and growth, which is what America is kind of known for among other things. So I thought rather than go that safe route of Captain America, why don't we do Iron Man? Anyway, toys aside, uh, I thought, why not have a look? Because, you know, it's a little bit different for the 4th of July. So, uh, let's go. Firstly, I'm only going to be doing the Iron Man that I have found. And it's only four of them. I'm not going to be finding loads on eBay. I picked these four because I thought they gave a good representation of a good few periods of Marvel Legends. There's an exclusive, there's a couple of waves, and there's a Gamerverse one. So, yeah, I mean, they all look good at first, and these shots kind of prove that, but let's see how far it goes. First up is Neo Classic Iron Man, the uh, retro series. It comes carded, not boxed, like some Marvel Legends. And Hasbro have kind of done this thing now where it's retro cool and as you can see he poses really well just a bit kibbly on the shoulders but he's pulling off pretty good movements from my perspective he looks good the marbling is good and as you'll see this is one of the only figures with wrist articulation on all the hands no other iron man that i have found has had this and it's a bonus and as you can see, again, he poses really great. He's just a bit thin and lanky, if I've got any complaints for this one. So that makes him a bit generic, but there is one big flaw. His hands pop off way too easy. Now, I don't just mean his hands, I mean his whole wrist gauntlet. And that is a big minus. Here we have some of the packaging, and as you can see, it really mimics that Toy Biz early 90s aesthetic. It works for me on several reasons, because it's just a throwback to how nostalgic it makes me feel, regardless of how good the figure is. So if the packaging is one of the best things, is it really that good? Now, I'm not saying this figure is perfect. It is by far not. In scale with the other Marvel Legends, the head, as I said, is absolutely tiny. So when you're kind of building a hall of armor, it kind of stands out as kind of tiny head. How would he fit his head in there? if you're going for that realistic scale. But also little things like the arm falling off, it just, mm, no, it snaps back on just like a regular hand. But for me, it's too jointy and too, mm, it feels more like a suit than a suit of armor, if that makes sense. And the kibbly bits on the shoulders is a nice touch so you can get that range of movement, but then you're still left with that gap. And that is a bit of a nitpick. And the marbling texture isn't exactly the best, but in all fairness, it is a good representation of the post-Neo armor, or Neo post armor. One of those is correct. Moving on now from the tiny-headed post-Neo armor, we've got the AI Tony Stark armor, which is from a newer wave, the Shang-Chi wave. And while I feel like he's a bit of a wave filler, on a bankable character, he does look good. He cuts a good image. The colors of the plastic are stark and contrast well with each other. It's more cartoony and comic book accurate, but it's from a time when Tony was technically dead. And he does come with an AI armored, unarmored head with a few nice little paint effects, but I don't know. It just doesn't seem right to me. He also comes with some really neat little blast effects which are done in the same color plastic as the head. 
And yeah, those wrists, those are locked in position, unlike the post neo armor. So it's kind of give and take. There's good things and there's bad things, but the bad things are so tiny and minuscule, like no hinges on the wrists that, eh. But you can do this, bam, bam, blast nipples. The box is the standard Marvel Legends box. Nice little artwork on the side, really well done. But it's a little bit weird next to the rest of the Shang-Chi figures when you line them up on the side. And of course, your obligatory bio and what Builder figure part comes with what. So, is it just a good Iron Man or an outstanding Iron Man? Only Shakespeare in the park can decide. So yeah, this Iron Man is not exactly the best, but he's not exactly the worst either. Just a recolor of a previous mold, and its cartoon accurate colors do do it justice, especially with the uh, blue in the eyes and the chest. But is it really all that great? It's, to me, just a wave filler, a bankable character to rely on to help sell a wave that doesn't really do anything. I mean, even the builder figure, Mr. Hyde, is not really that sought after. So, eh, middle of the road, basically, but it's still good and fills out a nice hole in anyone's collection if you want to have a classic Iron Man. Now we come to the penultimate figure, Silver Centurion Iron Man. There are some with blast effects, two different sizes, of course. He is a Walgreens exclusive, and he just cuts a really good figure. The marbling is great, the joints are great, it poses great, even with dumb figures like Grey Gargoyle, it holds more than its own. And is the Silver Centurion that important in Iron Man history? The only reason it really stands out is it mixes the silver and the red. So it kind of harkens back to the original Iron Man being all kind of silver and gray, but it's just so good. I mean, these shots that I got were just, any way you pose him, even a jokey one, it's good. You know, I really shouldn't like this figure as much as I do. I was not around when the stories of the Silver Centurion armor was being used, and I'm very, very a casual Silver Centurion fan, but this figure does every single thing right. It's got simple design, yet enough detail to carry it off. It's mechanics inside for the shoulders are brilliant. The head works, even if you do get a bit of gappage under there. But the color scheme is good. The figure's good. The joints are good. It just works. I mean, what else is there to say? It just works. Now we come to the very bottom of the pile, in my opinion. Gamerverse Iron Man. It's some kind of space armor, but there was an original version done for a Target exclusive which was white or clear, but this is just a bad figure and it does a really good job of lulling you into how good it could be. I mean, the color scheme is pretty interesting, but once you start looking at it and taking time to actually observe it, the arms don't even extend out fully. The back here, the glue is just not really there. The back is kind of falling off on my version. And the neck brace, I mean, kind of the the whole thing, it just feels like a War Machine slash Iron Man hybrid that just doesn't work. The color scheme, as I say, does a really good job of pulling you in, but it's just so busy and clunky. And as you're going to see in a second, like the articulation is just hindered in almost every single aspect, especially the arms. He can't even extend them out fully. Like this shoulder here, the kibble should not be there in order to get a full range of movement. That could have been rectified in the design portion of making this figure. Like, what were they actually thinking to put this into production and just make this and throw it onto shelves? Was this a filler? It makes a decent enough Hall of Iron Man armor a fill-in, a stand-in. It looks okay for that, but as soon as you put your hands on it, I mean, what are those? Even Grey Gargoyle can't stand him. And now we come to the bottom of the pile. And I saved the worst for very last, because I like doing that to myself. You know, why not? Why not have a really good dessert before a really rubbish main course? This figure is just bad. 
color scheme wise it's very appealing yes and it draws you in it's a different look for iron man but there's just so many problems the arm kibble shorten it it will still look good and you'll be able to move the arm get rid of this he's not war machine he doesn't need all this back kibble to again hinder movement why do you need that and as i said before my copy the glue on the back for the backpack is just almost non-existent on most of it the arms don't extend properly yeah it's got hinges in the wrists again woohoo well done one out of zero again with these things it's just ridiculous why does he need like flared armored trousers and fins on the back no other iron man figure as far as i'm aware has or needs this it's almost as if they threw down a bunch of design choices and instead of making logical a to b decisions decided to throw everything into the pot and just put it all into one figure and you know what at the end of the day it does not work no it doesn't at all no i don't care what you're typing no i don't care if you think it's good this is a bad figure for so many reasons and the color scheme is simply just to hide the fact I love Iron Man, and some of these figures are really good. As I say, this one is definitely the worst. It's a hot mess. There's so many problems with the articulation and the color scheme and the marbling and the glue and the joints. I understand Iron Man is a popular character, and this is a great example to fill out your collection if you're making a haul of armor where you're not going to touch it at all because to look at yeah it's perfectly serviceable but as soon as you put your hands on it you can feel and i mean feel how janky this actually is and how cumbersome and how boring and how tired the only good part is the head the spare head that comes with it yeah this is the only good part the good photorealistic face that you can use for any iron man and it will work the best piece of a Marvel Legends figure is the accessory that comes with it. At the end of the day, it is just a mass marketed retail action figure made by a corporation aimed at a much younger audience. It just so happens that collectors want it too. And yeah, as I say, if you're going to build a Hall of Armor collection just to look at, it's a nice filler. But that's all it is, filler. Don't you want more on the 4th of July than just filler? I know I do. Anyway, thank you for watching this video and sticking with me till the end. I've been Toy Scourge. Please enjoy your 4th of July. Enjoy it as much as possible because in 2021, we have to take every moment as we find it. So until next time, I think.